I thank uh, Senator Avella and the Senate Democratic Conference for holding this forum and for the opportunity to participate in it. I am a, an emeritus professor from the Cornell College of Agriculture and Life Sciences, but I'm speaking for myself only. A couple of years ago, a high-ranking member of the DEC confided to a few of us that we were right to be concerned about fracking. Drinking water might become contaminated. One big problem, she said, was how to dispose of the fracking waste. And the other problem was human error. Things like chemical spillage and improper cement jobs. She assured us, however, that there was zero chance that the chemicals from the fracking zone would ever make their way up through the layers of rock to contaminate our aquifers. I agree that disposal of hazardous waste from the fracking is a major concern, and so is human error throughout the operation, and that either concern, I think, is reason enough to ban the use of hazardous chemicals in fracking. Recent research, however, makes me wonder whether an even greater danger is chemical migration from the fracking zone up to the aquifers, the very migration which our DEC friends, friends said could never happen. I won't attempt to recite all the evidence, but I will include some of it in my written testimony. Suffice it to say that taken together, a group of recent papers presents a disturbing picture. Through the use of natural radioisotopes to fingerprint methane, it's been shown that methane contaminating well water near fracking sites originated not from the organic matter around, which drilling companies want us to believe, but deep down in the earth where the gas is. Other work found that the closer a water well was to a fracking site, the higher the methane level tended to be in the well water there. And most notably, ongoing EPA research in Wyoming is finding many fracking chemicals in the well water near gas wells. Then there's a recent peer-reviewed paper, it's out just two weeks ago, where a mathematical approach is taken based on interpretive modeling. The author is Tom Myers. He calculates that ordinary transport of chemicals from deep shale all the way up to the aquifers would take tens of thousands of years, more or less agrees with what my friend from the DEC said. But he also calculates that the explosively high pressures used in hydrofracking would reduce the transport time to centuries or decades, and in some circumstances, to less than 10 years. By the way, the first fracking of a horizontal gas well was done just 10 years ago. According to Meyer's calculations, the toxins you just heard about could begin to arrive in their journey from the fracking zone to the aquifers any time within the next decade or two. Shall we take the chance he's wrong? Shall we pump billions of gallons of toxic water under New York soil? find out? I don't think so.